Hey YouTube, it's your boy Kenrick here again, aka the Optometry Prodigy, and guys, I'm back this week with another video. Guys, thank you so much once again for viewing my videos, for liking, subscribing, and even sharing them as well. This week, we're going to be looking at should you or do you need to prescribe all the plus that you'll be getting in refraction and guys we're going to look at it from a perspective of hyperopia in particular so without further ado let's get right into the video okay guys so as i said today we'll be looking at it from the perspective of hyperopia hypermetropia or what we also call farsightedness so it's basically when you can see out into the distance well and when I'm looking at it from the hypermetropia perspective, I'm not talking about the curvature, axial, or pathological hyper, um, hyperopia that um, we also know. And we're also not looking at it from the astigmatic perspective, which is the simple or compounding, etc. So guys, we're looking at it from accommodation or the accommodative perspective. Because sometimes what we realize in practice, with these accommodative um, anomalies, different things that can happen, accommodative spasm, and we know in these kids as well, teenagers as well, the accommodation is very good. Sometimes it might be too excessive for what they need in um, general life for functional vision. Um, sometimes the accommodation could cause an issue there with the refraction. So that's basically what we will be looking at. Actually, in hyperopia on a whole, we have a lot of accommodating going on. Sometimes even out into the distance, if the object is not too far away, the individual needs to even accommodate for the amount of hyperopia that they have naturally to even see that object out into the distance. Um, just imagine if they have something at near as well. They need to accommodate for that natural accommodation that they have, and then they need to accommodate even more for the demand that that near task requires. So let's jump right into the breakdown of um, hypermetropia. This is a little case that I have here. We'll be going into it after the topic itself. But this is a patient, 15 years old, chief complaint of frontal headaches, neck pain, and problems seeing the blackboard at times. So that's a little bit far off. This is the first eye exam ever, and ocular health and general history is unremarkable. When we look at the AR readings here, we have minus 025 on both eyes for the um, autorefractor. But when you do a dry retinoscopy, you realize that you're getting around plus 2 and the V is, is giving you around 2040. So, yeah, a little goes up there a little bit. In the subjective refraction now, they are only accepting plus 025 in both eyes, which gives 2020 vision. The cyclo refraction now what the, that you decide to do is giving you plus 5 and it's giving you around 2030 vision. So, guys, if you want, you can pause it here, have a look at the results, um, see what you think is going on here, right? So let's jump into the topic itself. So overall, we have something called total hyperopia. It's a total amount of hyperopia that is in this um, the system or the visual system, right? And this is really exposed through cyclopedia. When we do a cyclopedic refraction, that's where you knock out the accommodation. You paralyze the ciliary muscles so they, the eye can't accommodate. The lens itself can't accommodate, right? This is made up of two types of hyperopia. So we have latent hyperopia, which is the hyperopia that you get from the tonus of the cellular muscle so this is when the cellular muscle is at rest a resting state the resting state of the cellular muscle it, it, the accommodative is not the accommodation will not be zero um it will be at an intermediate distance so there would be some accommodation going on there but sometimes it's even more than necessary sometimes with this latent hyperopia we get the question of pseudomyops as well sometimes it is mixed up because both of them are actually caused by that excessive accommodation that may be going on in the accommodative system itself but the pseudomyops you would be really you would be getting more minus in your subjective refraction rather than in terms of the latent hyperopia where you gain more plus in the um refraction another thing to note about the latent hyperopia it is not um seen necessarily in your routine refraction you really get to know how much a latent hyperopia is when you do what we call a cycloplegic refraction right guys and the other type of hyperopia that goes into the total hyperopia with latent hyperopia is called the manifest hyperopia and the manifest hyperopia is the hyperopia that shows up when we do our dry refraction or routine refraction this is the um that plus that you get this is the manifest hyperopia it is made up of two forms the facultative hyperopia which is the hyperopia that the accommodative system is able to cover. The range of accommodation is able to cover this amount of um, hyperopia. Then we also have what we call the 
absolute hyperopia. The absolute hyperopia is the amount of hyperopia that cannot be corrected by the accommodative system. So possibly the accommodative system, um, the amount that is available is already taken up by the facultative. Um, the absolute would remain, which cannot be corrected by the accommodative system. Okay, so as a whole now, we have the total hyperopia, which is the amount that you get after psychopedia. So it's the total amount of hyperopia within the system. It is composed of two, latent and manifest hyperopia. Latent hyperopia is the hidden or covered hyperopia that is done by the tonus of the ciliary muscle. Sometimes this is more than actually necessary. We also see it a lot in teens and younger kids because they have excessive amount of accommodation that they can do. The manifest hyperopia is the amount that you get from refraction, or routine refraction or dry refraction. And also it is important to remember that latent hyperopia you wouldn't get it wouldn't show up in the routine refraction um the manifest hyperopia we have the facultative and the absolute facultative is the one that is covered by the amount of accommodation within the system and the absolute is the amount that cannot be corrected by the accommodative system so let us look at it as an equation total hyperopia is latent hyperopia plus the manifest hyperopia the manifest hyperopia in itself is the facultative plus the absolute. And so let's go back now to the question. So the patient is 15 years old, frontal headaches, neck pain, problems with um, seeing the blackboard at times, full size exam about the VS, um, sorry, the ocular health and in general health history is unremarkable. So we have the ER again, minus 025, um, a small bit of and in that case you would have said myopia showing up there the injury refraction we see we have a lot more plus than we see in the hyperopic with 20 40 v's the subject refraction the plus goes down and we're at plus 025 now so it moved by 1.75 diopter sphere and then even the cycle refraction when we did the cycle we got over or around plus five diopter spheres in both eyes so how are we going forward with this here so let's break it down in terms of the terms that we just used so the patient requires plus 0 to 5 to see at distance. This is the absolute hyperopia. The absolute hyperopia, again, is the amount that is not corrected by the accommodative system. It is also known as the least amount of plus that will give you clear distance vision. The manifest refraction reveals that the patient will tell up, up to plus 2. So this is the manifest. This is what you got on dry refraction. Then we have our cycloplegic refraction, which is the plus 5. Again, the facultative is the amount that is covered by the accommodative system, and we get that, which is the difference between the absolute and the manifest. The remainder is what we call the latent. Again, the latent shows up in the cycloplegic refraction when all of the hyperopia is revealed. So in this case, what exactly or how exactly do we go forward in managing this patient? Um, different eye care practitioners might do different things, but um, for example, in the cases where we reveal that it's possibly an accommodative problem, convergence problem. Remember that near triad system. Um, possibly might go into vision therapy and so forth to try and control that accommodation, help the system to relax if the latent hyperopia is just a bit too excessive. However, um, even in this case, what some of the practitioners would do in the case where we have the plus two there in our dry refraction, that might be the starting point and we know there's a lot of accommodation that needs to be broken down. So what we can do first is possibly prescribe half of it, which is around plus one, that will give the patient, it, it wouldn't give 20-20 vision, but it will give a amount of vision that is comfortable enough for the patient to be complacent with the lenses. Because if we just give them the plus 0 to 5 that we got on refraction, most likely they'll still get those frontal headaches, those neck pains, etc. Because that system or that latent hyperopia wouldn't be... Um, broken down enough so we do the plus one and then you might increase over a period of time as that latent hyperopia or that accommodative system relaxes so um remember in these cases what you're really treating is the symptoms or you're really looking at the cause rather than treating the patient's vision of the bat also another reason we need to be careful with these um, plus lenses especially is because you don't want to affect the immatropization um, process of the patient especially the young patients of course as they go towards the immature um, stages 
um guys also if you know any other ways that you approach the eye care practitioners that you approach pseudomyopia or latent hyperopia you can also comment that down in the description so guys i hope you understood the content today as we focused on the total hyperopia latent manifest facultative and the absolute um give us a thumbs up if you understand it share it with your colleagues share it with your students as well guys keep safe i'm out peace